Our top story, Australia's defence chief has apologised to Afghanistan after admitting that there was credible evidence his country's forces unlawfully killed at least 39 Afghan civilians and prisoners. None of the alleged unlawful killings were described as being in the heat of battle. None were alleged to have occurred in circumstances in which the intent of the perpetrator was unclear, confused or mistaken. And every person spoken to by the inquiry thoroughly understood the law of armed conflict and the rules of engagement under which they operated. These findings allege the most serious breaches of military conduct and professional values. The killing General Campbell was detailing the findings of an inquiry into suspected war crimes by Australian Special Forces personnel between 2005 and 2016. The report found that Afghan prisoners were ordered killed by junior soldiers to, quote, blood them. It also revealed that soldiers then placed weapons next to the bodies of the deceased to give the impression that they posed a military threat. The report also outlined that there was competition between some patrols to outscore others in the number of enemy soldiers killed in action. Australian troops were deployed to Afghanistan in 2002 as part of the US-led coalition to fight the Taliban militants. Tim Addison is the director at the Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies, and he joins us now out of Sydney. Tim, it's good to see you. This is being described as very disturbing. The inquiry has revealed many graphic details. What do you make of the findings? The findings are very powerful here because they are so systematic. Um, as the uh, as the senior defence man that did the report said. They are not to do with the heat of battle. They are deliberate things. The people knew what they were doing. Um, the investigation stretched back 14 years. It covered seven, about seven years. So these are systematic, deep-seated crimes covering many people in the report, 25 people involved in 39 separate killings. There seems to be a trend, Tim, in these cases where the blame is laid on a few bad apples. Should the, the higher chain of command take responsibility for failures that allowed war crimes uh, to be committed by Australian forces in Afghanistan? They certainly should. And uh, even there's some hesitant steps towards recognising that by the fact that they have already disbanded one of the special services units that was involved in this. But um, certainly what you say going further back up the chain of command is certainly a real issue and of course we haven't got the prosecutions yet this is a preliminary report indeed and perhaps early days but should there not also be compensation to the victims and families the u.s has been involved in this for some time uh, a type of blood money situation where they've been paying out relatively small amounts of money to families of civilians that they've killed. I mean, what hasn't been raised now with the Australian government and the Australian military apologising to the president and the people of Afghanistan is any sign that they're going to withdraw from the 19-year occupation of that country. So there's a lot of uh, issues still up in the air. Here we have uh, one of the major whistleblowers within the army, a, uh, a military lawyer, who is facing criminal charges and likely to go to jail because he's one of the people that exposed these sorts of things. So there's really a lot more issues to come out over this uh, report. The International Committee of the Red Cross has described uh, the report as deeply troubling. Uh, should this matter not be taken up by an international tribunal? I think that's a good point. But um, when it comes to the Statute of Rome, countries have to exhaust their local uh, avenues first. But if the government of Afghanistan decided to put it to the International Criminal Court, I think that would be a better way of dealing with it. Because many, in many respects, we have had a culture of cover-up in this country and in, in internal investigations there. This report has been remarkably frank, but there has been there have been cover-ups in the past. And so an independent body uh, would, would have more credibility. Uh, also, finally, Tim, has the report, albeit preliminary, cast doubt on Australia's role 
in the war-torn Afghanistan and also perhaps stained the reputation of its elite forces? It's certainly staining the reputation of Australian forces. And of course, remember, they are trained and equipped. Their technology links into the US forces in the areas in which they're involved, which are nothing to do with the defense of Australia. So the question of their role there certainly should be in question. I'll be one of the people raising that. Remember, the outgoing president, uh, apparently outgoing president in the US is already talking about withdrawing some of the troops there. I think these sort of crimes or, or public notice of these sorts of crimes should be a lever by which the occupying forces in Afghanistan should be forced to leave. They've never done anything good in that country. Okay, Tim, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts. Tim Anderson, their director at the Centre for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, joining us out of Sydney.